Welcome back to the Zenith 750 Super Duty build. In episode three, when we left off, I was talking about these level two by fours I have on the workbench. The reason you want these level two by fours is because when you're riveting together the, or the stabilizer skeleton, you wanna make sure it's perfectly square and not twisted. So I've mounted these two by fours on the table and in the back side, I've just used a little bracket to screw it into the workbench. And in the front side, I use an L bracket to screw that in also. I just didn't want these pieces of wood moving around or sliding around. So I wanted to have them secure to the workbench. I also added a piece of drywall under my workbench just to get it as close as I could to level. Um, so, you know, the workbench might not be perfectly level or the floor might be, not be level, but you do want to make sure your two surfaces that you're going to sit the horizontal stabilizer on are perfectly level. These two end ribs for the horizontal stabilizer have two tooling holes in them that the plans say to put an A5 rivet in just to fill. I like these solid rivets better and I like them because they're flush so I won't have any protruding rivet head sticking out of the tip. The problem is I don't have a squeezer large enough to dimple those holes or squeeze those rivets. So I'm using this dimpling tool here. You can see I just put in the dimple dies into the tool and you'll see in a second here, I put the rib in it. And when I punch down on this shaft with a hammer, it puts a dimple into the aluminum rib. Here's what the dimple looks like in the rib. And because my manual squeezer doesn't have a deep enough throat to reach these, I'm using my pneumatic rivet gun. And here's what the flush rivet looks like as opposed to having a domed rivet. The skin is now Clico to the skeleton on the top side, which is the side facing the workbench. Now it's time to bend over the bottom side of the skin and Clico that to the skeleton. I'm using a 10 foot long two by four here to help push the skin over evenly without kinking it. It's a really tight fit and will take some persuasion to get it all the way on, but I'm starting with the front spar, Clico in it in place, and then moving back to the aft spar. So the only way to get help over here is to bribe Brian with some ice cream bars. It worked because we got the skin on. These end ribs go on after the skin is on and the instructions say to put the front edge in first and then kind of squeeze the back end in and that's what I'm doing here. After I get it pushed in, I'll put a couple Clicos in the back side and then Clico it around the top and bottom. Once you get it clicoed, you'll notice that these holes that are in the ribs will need opened up to 530 seconds. So all of the rib holes have to be drilled out. And that's what these clicos are here after I already drilled them out. After drilling out all of the holes to the proper size, I remove the skin to deburr the holes in the ribs and then also deburr the holes in the skin. Now for the skin, I didn't want to use my deburring tool because the skin is very thin and I didn't want to countersink it. So I started using sandpaper and then I realized to, to deburr these holes with sandpaper is going to take forever and a file would actually work a lot better and be a lot quicker. And the file really does work a lot nicer. It's very fast to deburr your skins like this, but keep in mind that it does scratch the surface. So if you're going to deburr with this method, you're going to want to prime the areas where the holes are and where you scratch the surface. You can see here, I've just shot primer over the lines of rivet holes. One last step with the skins is to run your fingers over the edge and you'll feel a slight burr. That burr can be easily removed with just a few passes of 400 grit sandpaper. On the top front edge of these ribs, I noticed they were poking on the skin. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using a Dremel tool to slightly cut back the area of that rib that stuck up and was kind of poking on the skin. The problem with having it poke on the skin is that it could lead to cracks in the skin later on. 
I'm certainly not telling you guys to do this. This is just something I'm showing you that I'm doing on my airplane. Once I did grind just a little bit of that away, I wanted to make sure the edge was as smooth as possible just to prevent any kind of stress cracks or anything in the future. And I just touched that area up with a couple shots of uh, green primer. The skin is back on and now it's time to start riveting. And I think what you're going to notice is a lot of the rivet holes in the aft spar, because there's so many layers of L angles and stiffeners, you'll probably have to take a drill bit and just clean up the holes a little bit in order to get the rivet in the hole. Well, I decided to just sit back and manage and uh, have Brian finish up the riveting. After pulling a lot of rivets, this is the top side of the horizontal stabilizer completely finished. We flipped it over and we're doing just like we did the first time. We're using a 10 foot two x four to carefully bend the bottom side over. We will Clico it in place and then put all the rivets in and finish this baby up. Well, this is the completed horizontal stabilizer. Actually, it's not complete because I have two more rivets to pull, this one and that one. And the reason these aren't pulled yet is they're really close to, in fact, they're touching the support brackets. So I'm really not sure how I can pull these rivets yet. I may have to bend this stem back a little bit and use my manual squeezer to get on there. I'll have to just think about that for a little bit. So whether you guys are a first time builder or, or you've built many airplanes, think about what you've just done. We've just completed the construction of an actual aircraft part. You did this in your own shop with your own hands. Just take time to admire your work and realize the significance of what you've done. That's half the fun of building these is just enjoying these little milestones along the way. Now there's two things I want to show you about my horizontal stabilizer. Okay, you can see I've turned this over so it is right side up. So what we're looking at here is the left side of the stabilizer. 
And you can see the two rivets I put in here just to fill those tooling holes. And you'll notice two nut plates I have riveted up here. In fact, maybe what I'll do instead of telling you what that is, go ahead and take a guess. Leave a comment below on what you think these two nut plates are for, and I'll tell you in the next video what it's for. Okay, the other thing I wanna show you is, this is the back center of the horizontal stabilizer. And, you know, the, the elevator will attach up to the, the back of this, but this is technically the outside of the airplane. So, you may be able to see all these bolts. So what you really wanna do, this is very important, is you wanna make sure all the bolts are positioned the same way. They're not just all willy-nilly in there. Like on mine, the top surface on all six of these bolts goes horizontal. So they're all facing the exact same direction. Very important. All right, guys, that completes the video series on the horizontal stabilizer. Next up is the elevator, but that's going to have to wait until I get back from the Zenith fly-in this weekend. If you guys would do me one huge favor, just take two seconds and hit the thumbs up button. It really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm and it helps YouTube see that my videos get some engagement and it promotes my videos to other people so that I can grow this channel. Thanks guys and we will see some of you, I guess, this weekend at Zenith. For everybody else, we'll see you on the start of the elevators.